thank you and thank you for uh, inviting European ship owners to this conference. And uh, thank you, Anna, for this um, good overview of the um, current and new port reception facilities directive. I was kind of uh, counting on that, so that would ease my job and I can focus on the main concerns or main topics that are of concern to European ship owners. Uh, first, I'll quickly say something about EXA. Uh, sometimes there's a misunderstanding. EXA is a European uh, community of ship owners associations, which means we are Brussels, Brussels based, and we present the national European ship owners associations. These are 21 associations of European countries, and Norway is included. Uh, it was founded a long time ago, before I was born, and we promote and we protect the interest of European shipping in general. This slide is, a, is an overview of how the fleet is divided. It's not only European flag fleet, but we also um, protect the interests of non-European flags, but European control fleet. Uh, majority is container ships, part is tanker ships. Um, but let's hit the topic. Let's talk about port reception facilities, because that's what I'm here for. Um, so as I said, um, we represent, EXA represents the interests of different ship owners associations, which means that obviously we have to take into account um, that we, our associations represent on their turn different types of ships, EU flagged, non-EU flagged. They enter also different type of ports, not only European ports, but in many cases exclusively non-European ports. And all these types of ships and types of trade, trade have different needs, of course. And especially, this is very clear when we come down to port reception facilities. Um, with the, regarding the new proposal, we are very happy because it guarantees, or it keeps guaranteeing the provision of adequate port reception facilities for all ships entering European ports. As the Commission just explained, the directive, the current but also the new directive, takes into account that there are different types of ships and that systems can be um, tailor-made um, depending, or the fee can be calculated depending on the type of ship and the trade the ship is in. Um, basically, the, the fee system needs to be based on the polluter pays principle, which is also supported by the European ship owners. Um, this is partly, I think, because there are already 12 years it was, it is, that, that European ship owners are familiar with the, with the current directive. They're familiar, they know when they enter a European port that they can deliver their waste and that a waste fee has to be paid. In return, of course, they can deliver their waste for free in many ports. Um, so there, there's kind of, um, it's, it's becoming a habit for European ports, uh, for European ships and ports as well, of course. And the new proposal, um, the way we see it, it has three main aims. First of all, it tries to prevent marine litter um, when it comes from sea-based sea -based sources. Of course, um, the sea-based sources only, on average, represent 20% of the marine litter. Ma main, the main part of the marine litter originates from land-based sources, actually. It depends a little bit on the region and, and, the, and the sea or the, <coughs> the part where you live, because if we would look at it worldwide, actually the main source of marine litter from land-based sources comes from uh, more the, the East, Korea and the Philippines. Um, but um, this directive, um, as far as possible, tries to prevent marine litter from sea-based sources. And then as Anna already said, it, uh, it further aligns with MAPOL, which is good because it lowers the administ administrative burden, not only for ships, of course also for ships, because ships will be able to use the same forms, uh, the advanced notification <laughs> form and the enter report will be similar and the European form is similar to the IMO form, which lowers the administrative burden for ships, but also for ports. Because it's, it's one form, it's transparent, and all know what, uh, which form to use. Uh, and then, as being touched upon, is the 100% indirect fee system. Um, it's the intention of the, of the Council or, or of the Commission to introduce a 100% indirect fee system. Currently, with the current directive, we see a lot of different types of cost recovery systems throughout European ports. Making it, I mean, the fact that it's not harmonized makes it difficult for ship owners to, to when they enter a port, to find out what, what system is applicable where, how much do I have to pay, uh, I can leave what amount of waste for in return for my waste fee. So the, the aim of this 100% indirect fee system is to, 
to harmonize, um, ships will deliver their Marcolonic spikeways in return for the payment of the fee. Um, and it can be differentiated um, depending on the type of traffic and the trade, and also the hazardous of the hazardousness of the waste the ship is delivering. As I said, it's based on the polluter waste principle. But of course, um, the thing is that ports need to provide, I mean, ship owners are, as I said, they are familiar to pay the waste fee, um, but they will not deliver waste if ports would not be in a position or cannot ensure uh, the provision of adequate port reception facilities. <coughs> So I picked out um, five, given the current status of the new directive and the, the fact that it's still ongoing, it's not finalized yet, it's not adopted, as the Commission just informed us, it's gonna be adopted only at the beginning of, of next year. Um, for now, we still see, from a European ship owner's perspective, we still see five um, important topics, which we're closely monitoring, which we are closely monitoring. First, what is important, as I said, um, we need to have, or of course, need to ensure to us the provision of adequate port reception facilities for all ships entering uh, a, a European port in this case. And this depends whether it's commercial shipping, whether you're a cruise ship, uh, whether you're in short sea shipping, short sea vessels, for instance, uh, that operate on a tramp market. They enter many ports where they deliver more frequently. Um, this means that they have a, a different discharge behavior than large ocean-going tankers or container vessels that, for instance, sail between uh, the port of Antwerp and, and a U.S. port. When they enter Antwerp, they, they might want to deliver their Annex 5, their garbage, but the amount will be huge, of course, compared to a short sea ship, which is in, in regular, um, which has many different port calls um, in a shorter period of time. Secondly, and equally important, it's not only to provide the facilities, but of course it's important that what happens with the waste afterwards, that it's done in a safe and environmentally sound, that the waste is treated in a safe and environmentally sound manner. Uh, there we see with this new proposal, proposal from the Commission, that there's a better guarantee, uh, there's more uh, attention paid to the ship-shore interface, uh, making it easier for ports, for port reception facilities, and for ships to comply. Because it's now clear that on board a ship, the MACPO legislation is applicable. And once the waste is delivered to the facility and treated afterwards, then the EU land-based waste legislation will be applicable. It has been touched upon, it's the, uh, the Water Framework Directive, the EU Waste Framework Directive, and, and other applicable European or national legislation. Um, but yeah, a third part of, of, of point of concern, and it has been raised, um, is that we see that several stakeholders um, are, are um, think it's a good idea to, to add additional waste streams to the new system or to the new directive. So currently the directive is applicable to all MAPO residues, meaning ship generated waste, which waste that is generated on board a ship while it is sailing between port A and port B. Now an idea is to um, request ports not only to develop cost recovery systems for the delivery of the ship generated waste, I'm still using the old definition, uh, but to also make it mandatory for, for um, waste coming from offshore industry, waste coming from ship repair activities, also ballast water sediment has been mentioned, and we believe that this will probably be a bridge too far to make a one, it, it will be, or it's, we, deem, we think it's very difficult to develop a one size or, or, or one um, size fits all cost recovery system. Because when ships enter ports, it's pretty obvious. A ship is entering a port, you have, you produced waste during your, your last um, journey. You enter the port, you pay a waste fee, and you deliver the waste. And the monitoring is, is taken care of, the waste delivery receipt is given to the ship so that can, the ship can show that it delivered waste. Um, well, for other industries, such as the offshore, the ship repair, it's completely different. Ship repair yards, for instance, they, they receive a ship, it goes into maintenance, dry dock, rate of fitting, um, and there in the ship repair facility, that facility is, is, is 
comparable to any land-based facility, actually. It has a environmental license. It, um, it already um, takes into account, or, or it's already, um, uh, it already has waste contractors that they use for other types of waste. So the waste that is set free, if you can call it like that, in a ship repair yard, there's no, not necessarily a link with the port or with normally ship generated waste. So trying to fit all these different waste streams now into one, one cost recovery system, we think that's a, that's a bridge too far. There, there are already many types of ships that are in many types of trade that we have to take to, into account or that ports will have to take into account when developing a fee system um, that we think it's, it's probably a better idea to, um, to try to handle those waste streams from the offshore and from ship repair yards um, to, to keep that under the land-based waste legislation, not to try and fit it into this directive. Um, finally, one, one last word on the, well, I'm, I'm touching upon the fee system now. Um, we believe, as has been said, that um, the fee system should uh, allow ships to deliver all their methyl unexpired waste. Some, it's currently under discussion whether or not there should be a limit. Today we see in some ports that ships can enter port to pay a waste fee, and in return for that amount, they can deliver, um, let's say, 50 cubes of oily waste and five cubes of garbage. And what we see is that ships tend to restrict themselves to that amount, making it not efficient for ships, but not efficient for ports, and not efficient for port reception facilities to, to collect the waste. It would be better if the polluter pays a waste fee and in return for that amount, in any European port, it can deliver all its waste for free. No limits. Because the ship, the ship cannot magically, we cannot, yeah, we cannot do magic and make garbage appear. I mean, we will deliver garbage that when we enter our port, the garbage which is on board, that can be delivered. What we saw under the previous, or under the current directive, is that for that limit their amount, as I said, ships tend to deliver five cubes or whatever the limit is, and then sail on to the next port. I know that some ports are a little bit afraid of the system, or, or and I'm not sure why it is, because the directive clearly says that that um, ports cannot be cannot be or member states cannot subsidize the system. It's always a pollute, and now it's even more embedded in the in the directive. It's a polluter that needs to pay. It's a polluter that needs to take up responsibility for the for keeping the fee system going, for the treatment of the waste, for the delivery of the waste. So there's actually no uh, no real financial risk, or there should not be any financial risk for the port. Um, yeah, another a disadvantage we see in, in having a, a limit on the on the amount of waste the ship can deliver. Um, one um, common term that is proposed uh, to limit the amount of waste a ship can deliver is, is that they propose to refer to ships can deliver normal quantities. And it would be up to European ports to define normal quantities. But that would again not facilitate harmonization within the EU. Um, and especially another concern is that we fear that it will keep ports into their business as usual. Um, it will maybe not trigger them into keeping updated with latest technologies, keep investing in additional capacity, um, looking to revise or, or um, uh, revise their waste management plans, keep up to date with what ships need actually to deliver waste. I mean, we, we all know that, that especially at, at the European but also at the international level, a lot of legislation is being developed. To date, uh, the discussion is on scalable waste, and tomorrow it will be on something else. So we really need ports and port reception facilities to to keep up with the uh, with the uh, with the legislation that is going on and provide additional capacity when it's needed. Because obviously, without a, a port, a uh, uh, ship is nowhere, and without a port reception facility, uh, no ship can deliver any waste ashore. And finally, uh, as a global actor, because as I said, we represent European flagships, but also non-European flagships, and our ships enter um, all, all ports, not only European ports, 
We are also looking at work that is ongoing currently at the beyond European borders at the international level at the IMO. Um, and in fact, next yeah next week it's MEPC week at the IMO, and there we see that a, a working group will be established on marine litter. Um, um, and also in that working group, group, we will try to contribute from our positive we have from our positive experience we have had with our own own European directive, uh, which on certain topics clearly goes beyond the macro legislation because we feel it's important. Although, as I said at the beginning of my presentation, the the main source of marine litter is not only sea based but mainly land based. Um, still, it's it's our members our members daily work area so we feel we have a duty to to take we have a responsibility to take and many european ship owners are already engaged in several projects i think the what's the name of the the dutch the clean seas no the clean seas project the the dutch guy Boran, who who is trying to um to get the uh, plastic the microplastics and the marine plastics out of the ocean uh, many ship owners are engaged into that pro project but of course at the international level we have to see what is feasible what is good and what can realistically be achieved because in european ports um, we know what the land-based legislation is for instance as i said at the beginning of my presentation it's not only about receiving the waste we, we also want to make sure that once our waste is delivered ashore it needs to be treated in an environmentally sound manner. So these are all topics that, again, are very important to take into account when you go and look at the international level and see if you can, it might not be so easy to, to just extrapolate the European solution to the international level. Um, but the good thing is, is that it's going to be discussed at the international level. And also other um, UN bodies are present at the IMO level, um, bodies that are more familiar with, uh, for instance, tackling marine litter from the land-based um, sources. So uh, we're very much looking forward to contribute there as well. And with this positive note, um, thank you for listening. And I'll take questions later, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sir.